I want to look an aspect of evangelism. That is the fifth gospel. The fifth gospel. We have four gospels in the Bible. First three, synoptic gospel, and then we have John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and what? And John. But there is a fifth one. You don't find it in the Bible. Though there are things that are called the fifth gospel. For instance, the Holy Land is called the fifth gospel. The land of Israel. Because when you go there, you see the Bible. You don't read it there. You see it and you touch the Bible. Praise the Lord. All the things you have been reading, you go there, you confirm them. That yes, this is true. This is true. This is a tomb. This is where Jesus did this. This is where he did that. This is a desert. It's called the fifth gospel. Then we have one heretic book. Heretic book. I don't want to say what the book, uh, how the book came up. I don't put those words into my mouth. The book, fifth gospel, that was written by someone, it was forged. They also call it the fifth gospel. But this one I'm talking about, this fifth gospel, we can see it clearly in the words of Jesus. Jesus told the disciples, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. It is when you love one another that people will know that you are what? You are my disciples. Because love is a fulfillment of the law. It is a fulfillment of the prophets. Love, all things, the whole of Christianity revolves around love. We can carry the biggest Bible in the world that we want to show Jesus to others. But if what we are doing is not in alignment with what we are saying, we will be called deceivers. Jesus warned the disciples. He said, be careful. Because there are sheep. There are wolves in sheep clothing. But by their fruits, you shall know what? Do we have wolves in churches today? Are they in church? But by their fruits, by the way they behave, we shall know them. You don't know a man of God. Everything about the man of God on the pupils. God can use anybody to speak. God can use anything. Is it not an animal that rebuked Balaam? Eh? On a donkey that had never attended church. Rebuked Balaam. So God can use anybody to speak. Just on the pupils, Christianity on the pupils has very little to do about what people see about us. The Greeks, they met the disciples when they saw that the disciples were the very one shouting that Jesus is king, that he is the son of God. They said, before these close relatives can affirm the sonship, the holiness of this man, we believe in his ministry. If our Christianity is not confirmed by our members, by our wives, our children, our husbands. If our Christianity is not confirmed by these people, we are still hypocrites. A lot of us find Christianity difficult. Why? Because when we accept Jesus Christ, we are told just to confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts. Some of us did not see Christianity as a cross that we need to carry daily. And as you carry the cross daily, before you talk to people, if you are carrying your cross well, before you open your mouth to talk to people, people already believe in you. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 9, the woman saw Elisha and noticed some things about Elisha. And the woman met the husband and said, I perceive that this man is a holy man of God. Look at our posters everywhere. Ministers of God everywhere. What you see is hot prophets. Powerful man of God. I see your face, I prophesy. Things like that. Holy men of God are vanishing from the world. You have people who can do, raise the dead now, ask the cripples to walk, but the next minute they are in one hotel with a lady. 
And people are getting confused about Christianity. The fifth gospel is a gospel we preach with our character. How many of us are preaching Christ? Let me tell you one truth. Communication is both verbal and non-verbal. What I'm doing now is both. But verbal communication is the meaning of what you are saying lies on just several percent. 93% of the meaning of what you are saying, which is a non-verbal communication, is 93%. So what we are doing sounds so loud that nobody hears what we are saying. It is a character first. People should not see us, instead of giving glory to God, they are becoming confused about Christianity. Today, people become confused every now and then. People become confused. I watched a short clip on uh, Facebook. Some people, they wrote, we have been saved. But you see them preaching Jesus with bump shots, we can't go tight, and they were moving, and a woman was weeping and said, you are inviting me to come to your church. You have been deceived. May seeing you, I see that you are not Christians. The Jesus that saved you, saved your soul, saved your body, and saved your spirit. Today we say God is in your heart. It's a lie. God is everywhere, all over us. People don't see the God in your heart. What they see, if you compromise it, people will compromise what is inside. Jesus said, Anything outside a man cannot pollute a man, but it is what comes out of the man that pollutes a man, like murder, lust, adultery, theft. These are the things that pollute a man. Where does our appearance come from? Is it not your mind? Ladies, women in this place, mothers, before you go to any party, don't you plan what you want to put on? You plan it. Where do you plan it? Is it not in your heart? So what you are putting on comes from your mind. So, if your appearance cannot display Jesus to the world, what we display him? Is it your heart? Am I seeing your heart? Lots of confusion. The fifth gospel. Before we round up, I just want us to open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Ye are our epistles written in our hearts known and read of all men for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us written not with ink but with the spirit of a living God not in the tables of stone but in the fleshy tables of the hearts if we can't preach in the compound we stay our messages outside will become fruitless if we can't preach Jesus in our offices, it becomes fruitless, the message. I cry to God that I should not bring reproach to this great God. I'm not worthy to work for him. Instead of me to get to the point of bringing reproach to him, he should take me. It's better to die. It is better to die standing than fall and never rise again. A lot of us enjoy this reproach we bring to God. Everybody today, every Almost every lady wants to be a says goddess. As you are moving by, you, everybody should be bowing down and cashing attention. People are having accidents on the way, car crashing. It's none of your business. You are achieving your aim. As you are moving with high heels and with the titans, your God, which is the God of this world, is receiving his glory. I was asking a lady in my dream, how many men have you seduced? I mean, how many men has gone to bed with you today? And she said, nobody has gone to bed. I said, people have committed adultery with you in their hearts. You don't know their number today. In my dream. And I said, God is teaching me something. In our offices, do we preach with our character? Do we preach? Somebody told me that I called the wife I wanted to marry. The one I want to marry. And I told her, this is the way you must live your life. And I said, how? Why? He said, after two days I met with you, I know there are men of God who still think about heaven. This is a preacher. He goes to crusades to preach. But he was not still sure because he had mingled with many men of God. Even one of them, he told me, Stays in the house with a girl he met in the hotel in Enugu and took the lady to his home 
and their husband and wife. No bright price paid. And he's preaching, doing miracles in Enugu Yell. Let's preach Jesus' word. Are you a gospel of Jesus Christ? The day we shall meet with him, he shall tell some of us, well done, good and faithful servants. To others he will say, depart from me, for I know you not. For not those who say, Lord, Lord, we enter the kingdom of God, but those who do what? Who do the will of my father?